In a country vulnerable to disasters like the Philippines, efficient, accurate, and useful weather forecast could mean lives saved. With barely enough money, equipment, and personnel, Pagasa was blamed in the past for getting it wrong. What improvements have been made in the weather agency? And can we now pin our hopes on Pagasa to always get it right? I'm Linda Humilia. Join us as we go beyond the usual headlines, beyond the usual answers, and take you beyond politics. Even as a low-pressure area, Hagupit was already being monitored by international weather agencies and Philippine forecasting agency Pag-asa. With its powerful winds and wide radius, it was called a looming superstorm. But its track proved hard to predict. On Friday, a day before it hit land, Pag-asa made this forecast. Basi po sa mga uh, datos na inaitala ng Pag-asa uh, for the last 50 years or so, Yung mga bagyo pong nagde-develop dito sa bandang area na to, na kung saan nagde-develop din or pumasok ang bagyong Sirubi, ang tendency po ng movement nito ay more towards the central part of the country. While keeping a close watch on Pag-asa's forecast, news agencies were likewise taking note of various predicted tracks. Sabado ng gabi na sa Eastern Samar at Northern Samar, linggo ng hapon na sa vicinity ng Tikau Island, at lunes ng hapon na sa may Kalapan City po ito. Nung isang araw po ito po sana ilalabas dito sa bandang Northern Palawan. Pero kung titignan po natin ang cone of uncertainty, ito po nakikita natin dyan, yan po ang posibilidad na ito po'y pumanik o bumaba. Itong bagyo. Tignan naman natin ang forecast track mula sa Japan Meteorological Agency. Mula Eastern Samar, dadaan to sa Masbate at sa Lunes magla-landfall sa Romblon. Pero sakop din ito ang Metro Manila dito po sa kanyang cone of uncertainty. Tignan naman natin ang forecast track mula sa Joint Typhoon Warning Center na ginagamit po ng U.S. Military. Dito po, nung isang araw, mataas po ang forecast track nito. Sa ilan dyaryo po ngayong umaga, nakita po na ito po'y tatama dito po sa Central Luzon. Pero ngayon, binaba po nila ang kanilang forecast track at dito po'y dadaan din po sa Visayas at lalabas po ng mas mataas po dito po sa Mindoro. On the ground, preparations were being made based on Pag-asa's forecast. But President Aquino had a firm reminder to authorities. I'm pressing everybody na yung checklist of what has to be done, preferably should have been done yesterday. But we still have today and we still have tomorrow to finish all of these things up. And ba, parang after you've done all of that, go back to your list and see is there anything else that can be done. On Saturday, as predicted by Pag-asa, Ruby hit land. First in Dolores, Eastern Samar, slowly crossing Eastern Visayas to Masbate, to Sibuyan, to Batangas, and to Mindoro, following the Pag-asa forecast. Yung mga ibang agencies, kahit anong i-forecast nila, magkamali man sila, o okay lang, walang sisita sa kanila, walang, walang mga Pinoy na susugurin sila, walang gaganon sa kanila, pero sa amin meron. As the clouds cleared, the water subsided and the winds waned, government preparation seemed adequate. And many hope this would boost the credibility of local weather forecasting and improve the country's preparedness for disasters. And with us here in the studio, Dr. Esperanza Kayanan, officer in charge of the Weather Division of Pag-asa, and Dr. Mahar Lagmay, Executive Director of DOSD Project NOAA. And later on in the show, we will be joined by the Executive Director of the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, Alexander Pama, live from the NDRRMC. But before we go into our discussion, well, one of the hardest hit areas was Eastern Samar with Ruby making its first landfall in the town of Dolores. We now have our correspondent Rafi Santos live from Borongan. Rafi, how did the government's weather forecast help in preparing for Typhoon Ruby? Yes, Linda, let's uh, give credit where credit is due. Pagasa did a very good job in predicting where this, uh, the track of the typhoon will hit. And this was a very, very big help to government agencies preparing for the storm. According to uh, the government, they were able to pre-position their units days before the storm hit. 
because of the prediction from Pagasa. And when it did hit land on Saturday, the units that they prepositioned were ready and sprang into action because of the data provided by the Pagasa and where that storm will hit and where it will exit and where it will hit the hardest. Um, you know, the Pagasa has uh, taken a lot of flack uh, in the past couple of years because of what is perceived as uh, inaccurate, sometimes inaccurate weather forecasts, as with the nature of weather and uh, storms in particular are unpredictable. Uh, uh, Pagasa has uh, been given a very bad rap about that. But in this particular case and in the past typhoons that we've covered, Pagasa has been pretty much spot on when it comes to predicting that uh, where the weather, where the typhoon will hit. And that has really helped uh, government uh, agencies and LGUs and even the people uh, watching the news and, uh, and waiting for news of where the typhoon will hit. It really did indeed help them. And uh, when we asked residents, when we went to towns that were hit by uh, the Typhoon Ruby here in eastern Samar, they told us that the accurate weather forecast uh, for warnings uh, and also the evacuation plans set up by government were a big help. And that's why there were such, uh, well, according to the government, there were minimum, uh, minimal casualties. Uh, of course, when you compare it to Yolanda, it's very, very small. But uh, according to the government, it's been a very, very conscious effort for them to follow uh, the protocols that were established after Yolanda and one of those uh, big factors in, uh, in determining whether to preposition or where to preposition the, the units that are needed to clean up after the typhoon is based on Pagasa. So in this particular case, Pagasa did a very good job in helping people here in Easter Summer prepare for the storm. Linda. Well, Rafi, that's one bright spot in this otherwise um, a very unfortunate um, event, of course, a disaster. Um, but Tell me also, how do people, uh, especially the laymen no, in, in, in Borongan, in Eastern Samar, in the places you've been to, um, is it easier for them now to understand how um, the weather is being presented by the government agencies, the weather forecast, and of course, um, the other procedures, no, disaster risk reduction procedures? You know, Linda, if it wasn't before, it wasn't very clear to them before. I, mean, I think people have made an effort to really uh, learn uh, how to you know uh, how to understand uh, the the predictions by Pagasa and other weather agencies because of Typhoon Yolanda? According to the people that we've talked to, they now regularly monitor the the weather forecasts, whether on TV, on radio, which is of course the data supplied by used uh, that they use the data supplied by Pagasa. And now uh, people, when we talk to them, actually tell us that the prediction or the weather forecast is a big part of their day, especially here in areas that are very prone to typhoons, Eastern Samar, also in Leyte. And that is why uh, it's such a big, uh, big help for them. And also a bit heartening for uh, to know that people are now really paying attention to what the weather agencies are saying, but particularly Pagasa, and it helps them really plan ahead and uh, as we saw during uh, Typhoon Ruby, days before it hit, uh, when Pagasa said that it will hit Eastern Samar, particularly near, Ka uh, near Boronga and Eastern Samar where we are, people uh, actually are preemptively evacuating on their own, voluntary evacuations, which is not an easy thing to enforce. In, uh, in places where it, uh, in places that we've covered before, uh, people actually had to be dragged out of their homes before you could get them into evacuation centers. But not in this particular case. The majority of people evacuated ahead of time. And I think that is a, a big credit to Pagasa and other weather forecasting agencies that uh, people were very conscious that the storm was heading their way. Linda. Well, thank you. Uh, we still remember, of course, the controversy over what storm surge meant during the time of um, Yolanda. So it's good to hear that now. Rafi Santos, thank you very much for all your reports and thank you for joining us on Beyond Politics. Well, let's go back to our discussion, Dr. Kayanan and Dr. Lagmay. Uh, well, you've heard, no? Narinig naman ninyo. Um, a lot of uh, praises coming pag asas way, especially. And so how do you react to that? Well, actually, we are very happy for the uh, yung mga reactions oh, um. and congratulatory words, kind words given to Pagasa. Mm -hmm. But uh, for us, actually, we these words are really, really get uh, get away with our tiredness. Mm -hmm. Talaga namang, Talagang yung, nakakawala, um, ng nakakawala ng pagod. Mm -hmm. And then kahit yung puyat ng mga forecasters. And the fact that we have served and we have saved lives mm -hmm. is already a, a, a ano pa, for us, is, is already a, a good acknowledgement of our, of our deeds, of our job. Well, congratulations. So, thank you Puntang very much. Puntang ko si Dr. Lagmay. Well, first of all, what is the relationship between Pag-asa and Project NOAA of DOST? Of course, both of you are under 
the Department of Science and Technology. No? But Dr. Laguna, can you explain to us what is the dynamics relationship? Okay. <clears throat> After Sendong 2011, the President uh, uh, requested Secretary Montejo to mm -hmm. build up a program mm -hmm. to use science and technology. Not that there's not science and technology there, yes, yes, but so. uh, uh, get whatever is still out there and uh, make use of it so that we can put uh, the best products, the best science and technology in the forefront of battle against disasters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what he thought of was uh, to get the research and development projects of uh, DOST mm -hmm. or those that are funded by DOST. And uh, mainly they were from the University of the Philippines mm -hmm. and other schools. Mm -hmm. And they put it together and all of these research and development output, all of the science, the advanced science and the advanced technologies that are, mm -hmm. are available out there, which is being researched by, by that group mm -hmm. or those groups, mm -hmm. were put together and put into operation. Mm -hmm. And hence the name Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards. Oh. And to do that, uh, to be able to operationalize mm -hmm. all of the research and development output, mm -hmm. uh, we have to integrate with uh, Pagasa. In fact, uh, on a weekly basis, uh, actually since since uh, I think about several months ago, mm -hmm. it's been uh, every two weeks that mm -hmm. uh, the administrator of Pagasa, as well as uh, other agencies of DOST, mm -hmm. uh, meet up at our house to discuss about. Uh, uh, what, uh, to what what's uh, new in mm. Project NOAA and how to integrate it in, mm. into Pagasa forecast. So does Pagasa um, does Pagasa use the um, whatever data no is generated or supplied by Project NOAA or is that a separate? Magkahiwalay pa rin ba kayo ng um, shall we say operations and systems? Uh, some of the research findings are being given to Pagasa and they, this will be. Uh, our basis also. We, mm -hmm. we use their outputs as one of the tools mm -hmm. for forecasting. Aside from the data generated by our equipment, mm -hmm. there are also some equipment by the Project NOAA which serves also as our uh, reference. Mm -hmm. I guess ang tanong na lang, Dr. Lagmay, no? bakit hindi na lang kayo nilagay sa, sa pag-asa? Um, is well, that because... <coughs> well, because I work, uh -oh. I, I, I teach at UP. Uh -oh. so, <laughs> hindi, because uh, sabihin yung Project NOAA, was yeah. not um, made, uh, you know, part of Pagasa, the, the agency. Well, because there's there's a lot of help that can come from uh, researchers and mm -hmm. scientists outside of, of Pagasa. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, research work, mm -hmm. or lots of studies that can be still tapped. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just the technology; it's about mm -hmm. other things as well. How mm -hmm. to communicate. What, what kind of platforms to use in order to be able to communicate, like mm -hmm. the use of social media. And all of these things need to be integrated into forecasts. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the science and the technology. It's mm -hmm. really communicating. But it's, at the same time, maximizing the technology to be able to communicate well. Mm -hmm. Has there been any instance where you had different um, forecasts or different data uh, or conflicting data? Because, um, of course, people now look to Project NOAA, especially those who are very savvy with with uh, computers and looking up your website, ano, ito yung nakalagay sa Project NOAA. But some also look up, look to the, look at the website of Pag-asa. So, baka magkaroon ng confusion. Well, the data that we stream out, mm -hmm. like for example, those that you see in the apps and in mm -hmm. the website, mm -hmm. are actually all Pag-asa data. Also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, they are Pag-asa data. Sabihin, like I mean, the Doppler, uh -oh. uh, we're actually just translating uh, mm -hmm. all of these data so that it can be communicated. Because right. uh, mm -hmm. it's one thing to know mm -hmm. the, the weather, it's in a, another thing to translate that data or mm -hmm. that information mm -hmm. into uh, uh, preparedness mm -hmm. uh, for the impacts of hazards. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kayanan, in, at the, um, in the early days, ano, parang um, katulad ng pinakita natin kanina, Kuya Kim was saying, in the Japan uh, meteorological forecast, ganito ang path ni Typhoon Ruby. Sa US naman, ganito yung path. Tapos sa pag-asa naman, iba naman. So, bakit magkakaiba? Actually, yung iba't iba forecasting centers, they are using different models. Okay. So, you, the Japanese has their own model, the mm -hmm. Americans have their own, the Europeans have their own. Mm -hmm. But these are just forecast models. Mm -hmm. uh, dito sa pag-asa, yung expertise ng mga forecasters, and meron kami yung tinatawag na special judgment. Correct. We do analyze, aside from the models, na hindi naman namin totally 
sinusunod yung binibigay ng models na ito, mm -hmm. we have these other tools like yung weather maps natin, mm -hmm. yung hourly observations ng ating mga surface observations as mm -hmm. well as the radar. Mm -hmm. So, meron pa rin kaming uh, special judgment mm -hmm. na mm -hmm. inilalagay dun sa forecast. Mm -hmm. Sa kanila kasi, they are really uh, into dun sa forecast model. Eh. They depend on uh, they depend more on the model. Mm -hmm. Pero dito sa Pagasa, meron pa kaming ibang subjective mm -hmm. analysis tawag namin doon. Oh, oh. And aside from that, we have the climatology, yung historical mm -hmm. data natin. So, mm -hmm. we analyze these things to come up with our forecast. Mm -hmm. Kaya yung, yung forecast track namin, hindi talaga siya yung output of the model itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meron kami mga personal subjective, uh, subjective judgment doon. So, you take into consideration, for example, um, mm -hmm. historically speaking, Historical, ganito yes. yung bagyo pa ganitong panahon mm -hmm. na ito. So, mm -hmm. so um, it's a... Uh, consolidation, consolidation of, of, all, of a lot of factors. Pag sinabi niyo bang models, ano bang ibig sabihin nun for, for layman like us? No? Kasi yung pag sinabi nating models, meron tayong mga mathematical equations, mm -hmm. infinifid yung mga data, and most of the data are remotely sensed kagaya mm -hmm. ng satellite data, yung mm -hmm. mga ganito. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yung ibang equipment din, isinasama. But then, yung surface observations, which we do hourly, mm -hmm. pag may bagyo, mm -hmm. ito yung pinaka-importante yung datos na tinitingnan namin. Yung behavior ng hangin, kasi yung mga stations natin, dito natin makikita kung saan, ah, ito pala yung low pressure, dito nagtumataas yung pressure, dito yung bumababa. So, more or less, the, the, the path of the typhoon will mm -hmm. be this way. Mm -hmm. So, ito yung mga importante. And once the, the typhoon is already tracked by our radar, we are really very confident kung nasaan ang position nito. Mm -hmm. And we are monitoring talaga ng radar is very, very good. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lagmay, you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I wanted to add that um, I think... Uh, Apart from what uh, Dr. Kayanan said, mm -hmm. uh, Pagasa has ground data. Okay. They've got sensors uh, uh, spread all over the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've got Doppler data. Mm -hmm. They've got uh, uh, pressure data mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. from balloons. They release balloons and they mm -hmm. get pressure data. Mm -hmm. They got pressure data on the ground, which uh, is good input for mm -hmm the model runs. Okay, okay. So if you put more data mm -hmm. into a model, into the computer, it will churn out an output mm -hmm. that uh, is, is, I think, uh, a, a better output than mm -hmm. if you had none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think pag -asa is the one that, that has that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, in terms of, in, in that sense, mm -hmm. they have the advantage because they have uh, those kind of data which mm -hmm. others don't. So, meaning, I was going to ask that, um, of course, the U.S. forecast and the, the Japan, Japanese forecast and the European, they don't have yung mga Doppler, no? They don't have um, equipment on the ground. Well, it's they just... can see the Doppler mm -hmm. streaming on the website, okay. but in terms of integration into the model run, mm -hmm. as well as the sensors mm -hmm. being integrated into the model run, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's not present in their models. Does that mean that uh, given all these, na parang sinasabi mong sila yung pe people on the ground, eh? mas, mas on the ground yung, mas on ground yung pag-asa compared to, let's say, that's right. uh, the, other, the other models and the other systems. Yeah. Uh, must be believable ba dapat? If, if I'm a Filipino, no. I look at all these um, forecasts. Well, as, as, mm -hmm. as a scientist, oh. it's good to have other people okay. or other agencies run mm -hmm. the same model mm -hmm. and uh, use that to, to beef up the confidence, so mm -hmm. to speak, of uh, the models that we run here with, with the, our mm -hmm. own data. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not really a competition. Okay. And uh, what's important really is that... Uh, we follow mm -hmm. a certain agency that gives forecasts, uh, an official forecast, mm -hmm. because it's not, it's not only the, the weather that we're interested about. It's not just the, the track that we're interested about. We are also interested in translating that into mm -hmm. action mm -hmm. because all the other agencies will have to rely on that crucial information provided by PAGASA to take appropriate action mm -hmm. that involves uh, a lot of other agencies, mm -hmm. a lot of local government units, and mm -hmm. even the people. Mm -hmm. Now, if PAGASA, or the official statement of the Weather Bureau, mm -hmm. gets discredited, mm -hmm. then what will happen to all of our plans and all mm -hmm. of our actions if the people don't believe it? All right, that's uh, true. In the end, mm -hmm. it's us who's going to suffer if we discredit uh, the institution. If, mm -hmm. there are, if there are things that are, are, are wrong or were wrong before, Let's improve that institution. Let's help the institution mm -hmm. because we need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very clear that there has been a lot of improvement. So, Dr. Kayanan, 
to what do you attribute the the improvement no, in weather forecasting? Ano ba ang dahilan? Is it because of um, more equipment, more funds, more personnel? Ano ba? Alam ko na babawasan yung personnel. <laughs> Well, actually, the equipment, the support of government is really there. Mm -hmm. We have new equipments like the Doppler rad radars. We have uh, more than 10 radars and so incoming. Dumami so dumami na. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, we are now acquiring mobile radars. Okay. Ito rin ay makakatulong. And uh, the ano bang, what's the difference between the Doppler and, and the, the uh, radar and, the, and the, the usual Doppler radar and the mobile Doppler The radar. usual Doppler radar are stationed or fixed okay. in stations. Mm -hmm. Whereas itong mobile, mm -hmm. uh, Doppler din ito, but if we could uh, bring it to anywhere kung saan hindi mm -hmm. pwedeng mm -hmm. uh, sa area which will be affected, which cannot be covered dun sa fixed radars. Oh, okay, okay. And oh. also, uh, yung AWS, uh, marami tayong automatic weather stations all over the country. Ngayon, kasama rin yung mga AWS ng NOAA, so mm -hmm. we are integrating all the data. Mm -hmm. So, mas, mas dense yung, yung information, yung data, mm -hmm. mas maganda yung analysis natin ng atmosphere or ng weather condition. Mm -hmm. And aside from that, uh, marami rin tayong mga nag, uh, nagbibigay ng, ng trainings ng, uh, sa pag-asa personnel mm -hmm. na a-upgrade yung capability, yung capacity na enhance So, we have some other in institutions or kagaya ng UK Met Office, tumutulong din sila sa, pag sa, sa training ng pag-asa pag sa personnel mm -hmm. to improve forecasting and other international countries kasi we are member of the World Meteorological Organization mm -hmm. and the assessment of Yolanda case, malaking bagay yung nangyari kasi marami tayong lessons learned. Bumuhus ba Yolanda. ang tulong uh, to pag-asa you know, after yes. Yolanda? Yes, ma'am. Kasi... Uh -oh. uh, Actually, there was a mission team from WMO composed of international uh, countries na member ng WMO. They came here to assess what our our needs. Mm -hmm. So we were provided, actually we had a training, international training last last July. Mm -hmm. Meron tayong mga foreign experts. And then yung mga tools na binibigay nila sa atin. So mm -hmm. we really are being, uh, marami tayong support na. Mm -hmm. na But are you hampered by the... Kasi in the past, we've seen some personnel, you know, resigning ah, from yes. pag-asa. Kulang pa ba kayo sa tao ngayon? Uh, sa, nagkaroon kasi kami ng mga trainings. Mm -hmm. So, meron na kami mga bagong graduates na BS oh. meteorologists. At saka yung nag-conduct pa rin na kami ng another training for hydrologists. And may mga young ones tayo. And graduates from the University of the Philippines na okay. hinahire na rin natin ngayon as okay. meteorologists. Okay. So... That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to pause for a short break. We'll have more of this discussion and the important role of weather forecasting in disaster preparedness when we return. You're watching Beyond Politics. Welcome back. Still with us, Dr. Esperanza Cayanan, OIC of the Pag-asa Weather Division, Dr. Mahar Lagmay, Executive Director of DOST Project NOAA, and now we are joined live from the NDRRMC by Executive Director Alexander Pama. With your indulgence, uh, Dr. Lagmay and Dr. Cayanan, I'll talk to Director uh, Alexander Pama. Under Secretary Pama, good evening po, sir. Uh, Linda, good evening and uh, good evening to our televiewers. Thank you for joining us. Well, would you like to give us some updates on the um, NDRRMC's uh, data and, and uh, findings so far um, in your rescue and uh, uh, disaster uh, operations, sir? Yes, Linda. <coughs> yes, Linda. Um, at this point now, we are concentrating our efforts on the uh, what we call the um, um, response still will stay on the response uh, phase, phase. Mm -hmm. but uh, the focus now is basically more on um, the, 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 the assessing the damage that had been uh, wrought by uh, Ruby, mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, we give priority right now and in the activities on uh, the, the relief uh, efforts that's being undertaken on the ground right now, and we continue to monitor and, and then the get reports from the field uh, the, the, as they start trickling in right now, mm -hmm. both in terms of damages and then casualties and uh, most especially the other needs that uh, our uh, kababayans in the, those areas um, uh, that we need to send immediately. As of this uh, moment, Under Secretary, what is the official death toll from the NDRRMC? 
Well, as we have reported uh, early uh, uh, this afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, the deadline, uh, the uh, the period of uh, three in the afternoon, we have already um, uh, um, recorded officially, and uh, this is our, um, verified and um, uh, validated eight. Uh, deaths mm -hmm. and 151 injured. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I think uh, this this thing has already been asked of you, but I'm gonna uh, beg your indulgence again and ask uh, explain ask you to explain to us why is there um, uh, a difference now between the the fatalities as reported by the NDRRMC and uh, by the other um, agencies that are also involved in the um, um, rescue and response um, operations. Okay, uh, I, I think the um, focus of uh, the issue now is more on the, the procedures being undertaken. All right. Um, I, I am not aware exactly of the, the procedures and uh, the, the parameters uh, that are being used by other agencies or mm -hmm. anybody for that matter. Mm -hmm. We just focus on what's in our mandate. Mm -hmm. And um, the only time we will record a death for example, mm -hmm. if it fits into the criteria of what well, it's it's verified, mm -hmm. it's confirmed, and it's validated. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you don't uh, um, miss the fact that the things, the figures that we input or include in our report become official figures in an official document. Of course. So we are uh, bound by, by, by uh, some protocols, we are bound by, by procedures, and we are bound by the fact that this figures will be inputted, inputted in, in, in also a legal document. Mm. So, um, as they say, sometimes haste makes waste. We do not uh, record this, um, uh, the, the, the figures just for the sake of coming up with figures and, and say, nagmabadali tayo, no? We take uh, uh, caution mm -hmm. in recording these events. I, that is um, uh, without regard for whatever other figures are uh, being reported. But although um, um, it, it helps to a certain extent, because when we see figures from other sources, we, we take it as a reference and also check out in the field if um, those um, um, uh, reported uh, outside of what we have uh, would be help would be would be a help in in our. Uh, searching for, for uh, possible uh, casualties. Mm, of course, we understand uh, the need for the NDRMC to, to stick to its own criteria no, for determining um, the number of casualties or the number of fatalities. But um, can I just ask, sir, I know that you're verified, validated, and um, there's another criteria. Right. Number is eight. But are you also receiving already reports of additional um, fatalities except that you have not yet verified them? Yes, yes, we, we yes we do. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we we have uh, some figures uh, reported to us by, by either other agencies mm -hmm. or uh, other sources, and uh, that are now being subject to validation. Mm -hmm. The eight fatalities um, under secretary; these are all in the Samar provinces. Uh, or could you give us an idea where which parts of um, the the typhoon uh, um, hit areas uh, do these fatalities come from? Uh, they, they, they're not concentrated in, in summer only. Mm -hmm. uh, there are in, in other places, but I'm sorry, I, I don't have the, the, the data, the figures we're reading right now. Right. And I'm quite careful to say uh, in saying where these uh, um, fatalities are. I, okay. I don't have the figure, uh, the um, report with me right now, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, limited in summer provinces only. All right. In, in general, what, what, um, how did they die? Is it because of uh, drowning? Meron bang, do you have also that, that information yes, yes. right now with uh, you? So far, so far uh, we, we have some uh, drowning. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we also have uh, the, those who, uh, who were hit by debris. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, a casualty which um, and the ng puno in the height of the um, uh, typhoon. Mm -hmm. um, Under Secretary, I know, of course, that this is not your 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 uh, job to do, and you know? um, more of probably the LGU who's in charge of the preparation uh, or the the evacuation of people. But um, could something have been done to to avert these deaths? Uh, yung mga nalunod were they? Is it because they went out? probably fishermen or yung mga na, natumbahan ng puno mga those who refuse to evacuate is that the case 
Uh, yes, if you notice, uh, if you're going to look at the figures right now, uh, con uh, in, in consideration of the strength of the typhoon, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the time it spent um, um, gallivanting in the Philippines, if you may, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, considering also mm -hmm. the um, um, uh, direction, the, the places where it hit, um, I, I think we can um, uh, say um, to a certain extent that um, those casualties that, that we are reporting right now definitely could have been avoided if the individuals themselves would have heeded mm -hmm. the warnings and the procedures in the, in the preventive, uh, uh, preemptive evacuation that have been undertaken. Definitely, in fairness to the local government in the areas where, this, um, uh, where the typhoon passed, I can say that the local government has definitely done their part. Uh, they have um, done the, preventi uh, the preventive evacuation. Mm -hmm. Preparations have been undertaken. Mm -hmm. And it was done in a very, very uh, good, um, uh, efficient manner. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just unfortunate that we still have uh, some um, countrymen uh, who, who basically um, do not heed the warnings. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, I, I am sure a lot of us would agree. And I think you have been discussing that with our uh, excellent scientists uh, mm -hmm. with you right now mm -hmm. that uh, we have had a, a very good forecasting which became the basis for the preparedness mm -hmm. of our preparedness uh, cluster headed by the DILG and um, uh, the preparations also by the response cluster which is um, being headed by the DSWD and by the way I'd like to thank those guys they're terrific they've done their job um, wonderfully and, and um, uh, I can't uh, thank them enough Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, Under Secretary, that of course the job is not done. You're still collecting data, and you're still going to come up with your um, recommendation later on. But, um, Siguro offhand, would you have any new recommendations in terms of evacuation? Ano pa ano ba yon? Because the others, like like you mentioned, they, they did not want to evacuate. Magkakaroon ba ng uh, new um, models or system or or uh, protocol for evacuating uh, residents? Or, or stopping them from going out into the sea, you know, especially during typhoon season? You, you know, uh, the way we do things right now, we want to, to, to do this in a holistic manner. Mm. Uh, I, I agree with you that uh, there have, uh, we still have these things uh, uh, happening, that uh, we, we have some kababayans I mean, being victims of, of uh, these uh, calamities. Mm. But um, if you look at it, basically the the, the the problem starts when people don't heed mm -hmm. what is being told of them uh, for their own safety and as i was uh, mentioning earlier we, we try to approach the, this in a very holistic manner and the processes and the system that we are doing right now uh, has gone through a lot of um, studies and has gone through a lot of simulations that uh, we, we do and definitely every time we do something and we see perceived gaps or, 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 or um, lapses, if you may, we go back to it and we fine tune the, the, the plans, the systems, and definitely we're going to um, uh, go through it all over again and uh, improve the uh, system further. Let's just, uh, before we let you go, I know you're very busy. Let me just ask you, um, what were the challenges that you encountered no, as you went on with your, with your work? pre and post um, typhoon and um, is it uh, is there a wish list of some sort no, on the part of the NDRRMC na sana later uh, next year we'll, we'll have this equipment we'll have this X number of personnel to help us do our job better well um, the intention now is uh, maybe when we when uh, the, we, we, this is uh, over and done with at, at least uh, after all these uh, activities we will revisit how we have done it we do have some ideas on some areas that need to be uh, improved and uh, we, will, we, we will have an, uh, some sort of an ac after action review and try to find out and, and, and really, really uh, pinpoint on some of those things wherein we can further improve the system that we have. Okay, Under Secretary Alexander Pama of the NDRRMC, thank you very much for joining us tonight, sir, and thank you for all your hard work. Thank you very much. Well, going back here is the studio. Narinig niyo naman how how uh, the NDRMC feels, no? Na it really helped them a lot. Yung yung forecasting ng uh, pag-asa. Uh, again, anong what else can you say about that? Actually, uh, we are together with the NDRRMC. The we actually we met mm -hmm. 
early before on before the typhoon so all the they are asking our uh, predictions our warnings we are discussing everything mm -hmm. so everything went well and uh, the cooperation among this agency is mm -hmm. really very very good at this point mm -hmm. because early on as early as possible they mm -hmm. are already communicating so if we uh, we do not stand alone we really work together mm -hmm. so that's why this may be the recipe for a good uh, output mm -hmm. for we save more mm -hmm. we, we have less casualties so i think uh, it's not pagasa alone mm -hmm. it's it's the the, the everybody mm -hmm. work work hard for this yeah. Si Alex, si Under Secretary Palma mentioned uh, a word that you reacted to, gallivanting. Yeah. Ganun ba talaga yeah. ang ginawa ni? Is it a, a very unusual typhoon, Typhoon yeah. Ruby? <laughs> Para siyang namasyal. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> then played around. But oh. uh, anyway, I, th I think the, the important uh, uh, move that uh, was done by NDRMC was mm. to create that, um, that group called PIDRA. Mm -hmm. uh, PIDRA uh, stands for Pre-Disaster Risk Assessment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And before uh, uh, any crisis event, uh, days before, mm -hmm. when, for example, uh, mm -hmm. Ruby, even before outside PAR, mm -hmm. uh, MDRMC meets mm -hmm. up uh, the core group of PIDRA mm -hmm. that involves uh, people from the academe. Pagasa is there, mm -hmm. uh, DPWH is there, DILG, all of the agencies, mm -hmm. DSW. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on what is uh, the forecast, uh, it's translated into hazard impacts. Okay. And when it's translated to hazard impacts, the necessary action that needs to be taken. Mm -hmm. And because we, we work as a team, uh, we identify the problems and the actions that, that are, are necessary. Mm -hmm. And when that is done, uh, it translates into mm -hmm. actual action. But it's not really just about science and technology. Mm -hmm. If the people don't embrace the science and technology, then all of the efforts of PIDRA, all of the That's efforts right. of NDRMC will fail. Mm -hmm. But as you know, Rafi Santos reported earlier, there's a lot of awareness already on the part of the people. No? Parang conscious na sila ngayon na manood ng uh, balita, makinig kung ano yung weather forecast. And I don't know if it's just me, I have not been paying attention to previous weather forecast, but is it this is this the first time or one of the few times na talagang wala pa sa Philippine area of responsibility yes. yung bagyo, eh, tinatrack na natin at may blow-by-blow blow yeah. account of what is it doing, Dr. Kayanan? Yes, actually, siguro isang factor din yung experience sa Hayan. Kaya mm. malayo pa lang, we are already tracking. Mm -mm. And it's not only us, la, talaga yung international countries din, eh, nagtatrack nitong bagyo. And they are giving their information to Pagasa. And one more thing that we did today mm -hmm. uh, in this event is that we have a, another map being given to the PIDRA core group in the DILG, which is a map of critical areas to be affected by the, by the typhoon. Mm -hmm. This is an, an early uh, information para doon sa kanilang preparedness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, may, may, mayroon na kaming figure which mm -hmm. areas will be affected uh, according to their mm -hmm. uh, uh, yung kanilang critic yung if yeah. they are critical, critical. Yeah, yeah that's right uh, whenever there's a forecast on the accumulation of rainfall mm -hmm. uh, there's a map that's produced to show mm -hmm. where the landslide areas mm -hmm. will be mm -hmm. and or possible landslide areas will be as well as the floods as well as storm surges okay meron lang isang question ano because in the early um, in the few days before the typhoon hit mm -hmm. sabi anim na landfall um, and Ay, then ganito yung yeah. so bakit nagbabago i think um, yeah. in the end it there were only four landfalls there are five ah, landfalls. five landfalls yeah. okay uh, borong uh, yeah, the first one is Dolores, Eastern mm -hmm. Summer. Mm -hmm. Pangalawa yung Kataingan, Masbate. Okay. And then the third one is Torrijos, Ma Marinduque. Okay. The fourth one is Laia, San Juan, Batangas. All and right. the last one is Lubang Islands. Oh, okay. So, ay, ang, bago ito, ba ang bago dito is the Lubang the Island. The Lubang was the last one. Okay. This is okay. a small island. Mm -hmm. So, yung initial kasi na track is more to the south, mas mababa. Mm -hmm. So, there are more islands. There are about six six islands na tatamaan mm -hmm. doon sa forecast track mm -hmm. but the the track move a bit to the north okay. so may mm -hmm. may ibang isla na hindi natamaan since maliliit naman itong mm -hmm. islands na ito mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so but, but by the time it got to lubang yeah. island ilan na lang gaano how how weak was the, yeah. the typhoon already actually naging storm intensity na ito so mm -hmm. it it is less than 
uh, less than 100 na yung yung speed niya. Mm -hmm. So mas maganda yung nangyari kasi dahil dun sa friction at saka doon sa intrusion ng cold air from the amihan, mm -hmm. humina itong bagyo na to. Mm -hmm. But then yun lang medyo mabagal siya kaya meron din tayong uh, heavy rainfall na naranasan. Mm -hmm. But then, bago lumapit dito sa Batangas area, talagang mababa na yung hangin. Right. Yan na siya. Mm -hmm. So, yun siguro. Uh, actually, uh, scientifically, we could explain what happened. Mm -hmm. But then, I think it is also God's will na mm -hmm. or prayers may be helped na nag-weekend talaga itong bagyo na to habang tumatawid siya. Mm -hmm. Or else, kung hindi, well, we could say na marami pa rin water mm -hmm. along the way it could be source of energy na hindi siya ma, na hindi siya humina mm -hmm. but then yung intrusion ng cold air ito yung nagpahina mm -hmm. so kung metro manila eh hindi ganun na uh, nag weekend mm -hmm. you could still feel yung mm -hmm. strength ng ng bagyo mm -hmm. kahit ito ay storm intensity mm -hmm. so science can explain but mm -hmm how it changed. Mm -hmm. Siguro, meron din tayong Arba, marami pagpapasalamat. Din naman talaga, oh. Marami din naman talaga yung nagdasal. Of uh -huh. course, the, the Arsubispado asked for uh, praying the Oratio yes. Imperata no, for deliverance mm -hmm. from calamities. Well, we have to pause for another short break. We'll have your questions and comments in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, we asked our followers and friends on Twitter and Facebook how helpful were Pag-asa and other government agencies in their preparations for Typhoon Ruby and how can these agencies do better? Tom says, I think Pag-asa did a great job. Congratulations to the whole team. If only the government could give them more support. Meron naman daw, but more, more. RJ believes Pag-asa's forecasts were more accurate this time. He says, thumbs up to them. Froilan also gave the Weather Bureau a thumbs up. They are very helpful, well prepared, and fed us accurate data. And here's a comment from Facebook. The best thing people can do is to believe and act upon the reports of Pag-asa. Well, dahil Pasko. <laughs> Let me ask you what your wish list is. No, um, In terms of Pag-asa, I know that you've had more um, Doppler radars na dumami na, as you, as you said, uh, Dr. Kayanan. But what else? What what? What kind of equipment do you still want to have Actually, to improve, oh no, further improve? Yeah. Ang aming kailangan ngayon is communication facilities. Okay. Yung a big robust communication technology mm -hmm. na weatherproof kahit may bagyo, mm -hmm. hindi ito ma-affected. Mm -hmm. Para we could, at saka yung internet connection, ng pag, connectivity na pag-asa. Mm -hmm. Kasi we were not, we were, we parang nagbablock may traffic sa website ng pag-asa. Mm -hmm. So we are working on it may siguro kailangan pang lakihan yung bandwidth or mm -hmm. I think that the government naman yung project yung iGov na tinatawag mm -hmm. so yun siguro yung aming kailangan pa para maka-reach out pa kami sa mas maraming tao kasi maraming call sa amin why can't we uh, mm -hmm browse papag oh. website so yun yun yun, yun traffic Minsan, yun minsan nagda down uh -oh. yung website nagda down yung website so uh -oh. a robust telecommunication for our communication facility yung mga mm -hmm. data namin sana hindi hindi siya mag mag mm -hmm. pag may bagyo hindi siya maapektuhan mm -hmm. so yun and um, yung complete automation ng aming mga data at saka yung analysis siguro. Ayan, sana nakikinig ang Malacanang at nanonood. Akala ko sasabihin niyo dial up pa kami ngayon eh. <laughs> Hindi pa kami broadband. <laughs> ano rin po kami ngayon? We have a tie up with Google. So mm -hmm. yung pag-asa forecast is available dun sa Google Cap. So mm -hmm. yung mismong pag-asa forecast nakaano doon. Mm -hmm. So we are globally uh, nakikita na ngayon. Mm -hmm. Pag sinabi niyo bang um, weatherproof communication system, ano bang ibig niyo sabihin nun? Hindi, uh, hindi ito cellphone, hindi ayan, ito satphone. Hindi sa, satphone. But then, yung, yung, yung mga data namin, kahit may, may malakas na hangin, kahit may malakas na bagyo, mm -hmm. we could have a good uh, fast transmission ng mga data, tsaka yung pati rin yung out pag out ng information. Mm -hmm. How about Project NOAA, Dr. Lagmay? Uh, is there still anything that you know you want to add to 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 your systems or to your Well, there's always something to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a never-ending uh, learning process mm -hmm. because the hazards will be here and will be around mm -hmm. the 
till the next thousand years or mm -hmm. a million years. And uh, each time there's a disaster, we learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to uh, get that learning uh, not used because mm -hmm. we might we, we might uh, uh, commit the same mm -hmm. mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only difference, or the difference that uh, we did this time uh, from the perspective of Project NOAA is that we released detailed hazard maps that okay. depicted mm -hmm. safe areas for landslides, storm surges, mm -hmm. and, and uh, floods. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to complete at the soonest possible time mm -hmm. uh, the hazards that, uh, or the hazard maps that we have not completed yet mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we don't want the disasters to get ahead of our efforts. How many percent are you? Because uh, I, I do know that earlier this year we had Secretary Montejo um, on right. the program also and he was talking to us about the, the geohazard maps that you're developing. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based on, on, on LIDAR and mm -hmm. uh, there's also another technology called IFSAR from Namaria. Mm -hmm. and they, 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 have, uh, they produce, or from those surveys, high-resolution topographic maps on which uh, we, we conduct our simulations to mm -hmm. identify the safe areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we, we, we have already completed 54 out of the 64 coastal provinces for storm okay. surges, mm -hmm. uh, landslides for the different kinds of landslides, mm -hmm. shallow, deep-seated, debris flows. We've completed the entire Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, for the flood maps, flood hazard maps, we've completed one-third. Mm -hmm. for, for simulating all of those mm -hmm. uh, uh, areas that are, are hazardous from mm -hmm. floods. Mm -hmm. And we want to complete all of them so that the next time uh, uh, another ruby strikes, mm -hmm. we'll be able to deliver the barangay level detailed hazard multi-hazard maps. That's right. Uh, almost predicting already what will happen to a particular barangay, you know? If well, uh, gonna... well, if government can give a warning, mm -hmm. uh, because there are two important things that's very important for disaster uh, preparedness and mitigation. Mm -hmm. One is the government warning, which should be accurate, reliable, understandable, and timely. Mm -hmm. But it must be matched by appropriate action mm -hmm. and appropriate response, which mm -hmm. is largely based on the accessibility to such detailed maps, which will tell them where to go, Mm -hmm. uh, which places are safe mm -hmm. when there's a warning. Okay. Importante ang malaking bandwidth. Last question <laughs> for Dr. Kayanan. What, are, what is the outlook for the rest of, uh, you know, we only have a, a couple of yeah. weeks before the year ends. Yes. May bagyo pa ba? And probably the outlook in January. Actually, on the average, we, sh we have a tw 20 typhoon, uh, a year. 20 tropical cyclones a year, uh -huh. and Ruby is number 18. Naku, may dalawa pa. So, on the average, we still have two, mm -hmm. one or two, mm -hmm. but uh, currently meron kaming tinitingnan na cloud clusters down, mm -hmm. far down there, uh -huh. so we hope that it will not develop into a disturbance again, okay. and we have a good Christmas, a happy Christmas, so, uh, but uh, with regards to Ruby, it's now over West Philippine Sea, and mm -hmm. uh, it's threatening Vietnam, mm -hmm. So we are free from ruby. Already. Free from ruby, and hopefully no ruby. more uh, of those, uh, those. <laughs> cloud, clusters cloud clusters that you're, you're showing us. Yeah. Ito, ito po yung, I think this is the latest satellite image uh, that we have of where ruby is. No, mukang mukang ito yun from our weather yes. center at lumabas, lumabas na po. That's the latest one. The yeah, latest yeah. one, mm. the cloud clusters that we are Ah, ito na yung cloud clusters. Okay. Yeah. Medyo malayo. Where's the Philippines? I cannot see. Anong dito pa sa kaliwang, kaliwang, kaliwa. Okay, let's hope there will be nothing to those cloud clusters so that we'll have, as uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kayanan said, a, you know, a, a free and easy Christmas <laughs> season. Dr. Kayanan, thank you very much for joining us today and congratulations to Pag-asa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lagmai. Also, um, all the best to Project NOAA. We hope to okay. see your hazard maps soon. Yes. Well, well uh, there's more ha, that okay. uh, we've released. Uh, okay. Already, yes, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the complete, la ah, yeah, the complete set, ones. The yes, complete yes. Set. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. That's the show. I'm Linda Humilia. Join us again next week as we bring you analysis, news, and conversations beyond the usual politics. Thank you for watching.